Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing around in my art journal and I did not like one bit where this page started out, but I did love where it went in the end. And at the end of the video, you'll see the scribble journaling and exactly who this is for. <laughs> To create the words that I'm going to layer onto this art journal page, I'm going to just stencil directly onto some tissue paper. Now the stencil that I'm using there is called Verbiage and it's one I created for over at Stencil Girl Products. There are two things that I'm doing as I'm stenciling that are making it so that I will have crisp and clear images when I'm done. The first one is I'm stenciling in an up and down motion, just going straight up and down with that cosmetic sponge. The other thing that I did to help myself was use a thick or heavy body paint. Thicker paints run less, so you get crisper and clearer images when you're stenciling. And it's a matter of just cutting those words apart, and now I'm ready to start adding those onto the art journal page. So this is what the art journal page looked like when I started. And why is there so much black on there? Well, that's because underneath it were a whole bunch of things that I kept trying, colors I kept working with, and it just wasn't working for me. So what do I do when that happens? Well, that's what that black paint was for. When in doubt, just cover it up and add some more layers on top of it. One of the advantages to having a whole bunch of words to choose from is you get to audition them, see which ones feel right with what's going on your page. And so I'm trying some different words here and I'm not sure if I wanna be in the present tense or the past tense with this. And that's one of the nice things about these words is if you want them to be present tense, you just cut the D off of them. And if you're stenciling the words, all you have to do is put a little post-it note over the D when you're stenciling and then you won't have that. So you have the flexibility to have past or present tense with this. Now this is when my inner attorneys started making some noise. You see, I've now cut the D off of observe, so that means I'm committing to present tense, but I have a past tense word there on the bottom saying. And while my attorneys are just basically in my head right now, trying to convince me that I must straighten this out. And since I've shown you how to cut the D off of observed, then I clearly have committed to present tense. So they've got this very, very elaborate argument going on in my head as to why I must go with present tense as if I'm contractually obligated or something. Now these attorneys, they come from the law offices of Should and Associates. And while they are great at making arguments, they are great at trying to convince people of things, especially in our own heads. The thing is, is they don't always understand the creative process because sometimes you think you're going one direction and then you head another. I thought I was gonna be going with present tense here and I've decided I think I wanna go with past tense. And when you're being creative, when you're in your art journal, you can do that. You can change your mind, you can change directions. One of the things that the attorneys in my head were a little confused and well questioning me about was my choice of glue here. Because when you use tissue paper, if you use a glue stick with it, the tissue paper doesn't disappear quite as much. You can still see it. Like up on the word she on the top of the other page, you can see the tissue paper that's around it. And these attorneys in my head, they were telling me I should have used a different glue. I should have done something different. And it's not surprising that they were telling me what I should do, seeing as how they are the attorneys from Should and Associates. But here's the thing, just because that voice is telling me that I should do it, doesn't mean that I have to. And this is the look that I wanted, so that's what I went with. I almost left this just as it is. I really like the black and white look, but in the end, color called to me. I started by putting just a little bit of the art crayon on the edges and then rubbing it around with a baby wipe. Now my intention wasn't to smear any of the black paint there, which was completely dry by the way, so I'm not sure what it picked up or why, but I'll just call that an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. Sure, my yellow looks a little bit darker there, but it also matches with the page better than what I'd planned. If you haven't used art crayons before, they're like a creamy lipstick. And there are two ways that I like to smear or blend them around. One is with a baby wipe, which you've seen me do here because they react to water. And then the other way is with your finger. Both ways work, they just give you slightly different looks. The white space down at the bottom, I really like it there. But I also really wanna put color there. And I want more than two colors on this page. So I decided to go with a little bit of a compromise. I decided to put a little bit of blue on there, but not in all that white space. Instead, just putting it on the edges. 
And if you're wondering about any of the exact supplies that I used here in this video, I've got the full supply list for you with links and all that kind of stuff over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. There's one last thing that I wanna get on this art journal page, and that is some journaling. So what is it that I'm scribbling about here? Well, there are real thoughts going through my head that I'm writing down, and they're basically my reaction to those attorneys from the law offices of Should and Associates. What exactly am I using there to write with? Well, it's a piece of graphite. It's actually graphite putty. And it's kind of like having a pencil without all the wood around it. And when you get the putty, it's, it's kind of like, imagine a graphite Play-Doh. So you can shape it into whatever shape you like, any size, and then just let it air dry and it becomes hard and firm. And so it's kind of like your own little exactly to your fingers writing tool. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying the video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new one out. And of course, there's more fun always over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.